Bawa barked louder, and with each bark it grew, first to the size of a Doberman, then to a lion. The bark became a roar. The little boy screamed. His parents pulled him back towards the exit, straight into the park ranger who stood paralyzed, gaping at the monster. The chimera was now so tall that its back rubbed against the roof. It had the head of a lion with a blood-caked mane, the body and hooves of a giant goat, and a serpent for a tail, a ten-foot-long diamondback going right out of its shaggy behind. The rhinestone dog collar still hung around its neck, and the plate-sized dog tag was now easy to read. Chimera. Rabid. Fire-breathing. Poisonous. If found, please call Tartarus, extension 954. I realized I hadn't even uncapped my sword. My hands were numb. I was ten feet away from the chimera's bloody maw. I knew that as soon as I moved, the creature would lunge. The snake lady made a hissing noise that might have been laughter. Be honored, Percy Jackson. Lord Zeus rarely allows me to test a hero with one of my brood, for I am the mother of monsters, the terrible Echidna. I stared at her. All I can think to say was, Isn't that a kind of anteater? She howled, her reptilian face turning brown and green with rage. I hate it when people call me that. I hate Australia, naming that ridiculous animal after me. For that, Percy Jackson, my son shall destroy you. The chimera charged, its lion teeth gnashing. I managed to leap aside and dodge the bite. I ended up next to the family and the park ranger, who were all screaming, trying to pry open the emergency exit doors. I couldn't let them get hurt. I uncapped my sword, ran to the other side of the deck, and yelled, Hey, Chihuahua! The chimera turned faster than I thought it was possible. Before I could swing my sword, it opened its mouth, emitting a stench like the world's largest barbecue pit, and shot a column of flame straight at me. I dove through the explosion. The carpet burst into flames. The heat was so intense it nearly seared off my eyebrows. Where I'd been standing a moment before was a ragged hole in the side of the arch, with melted metal steaming around its edges. Great, I thought. We just blowtorched a national monument. Riptide was now shining bronze blade in my hands. As the chimera turned, I slashed at its neck. That was a fatal mistake. The blade sparked harmlessly off the dog collar. I tried to regain my balance, but I was so worried about defending myself against the fiery lion's mouth, I completely forgot about the serpent tail until it whipped around and sank its fangs into my calf. My whole leg was suddenly on fire. I tried to jab Riptide into the chimera's mouth, but the serpent tail wrapped around my ankles and pulled me off balance. And my blade flew out of my hand, spinning out of the hole in the arch and down towards the Mississippi River. I managed to get to my feet, but I knew I had lost. I was weaponless. I could feel deadly po poison racing to my chest. I remembered Chiron saying that Ankylumos would always return to me, but there was no pen in my pocket. Maybe it had fallen too far. Maybe it would only return when it was in pen form. I didn't know, and I was not going to live long enough to figure it out. I backed into the hole in the wall. The chimera advanced, growling, smoke curling from its lips. The snake lady Echidna called, cackled. They don't make heroes like they used to, eh, son? The monster growled. It seemed in no hurry to finish me off now that I was beaten. I glanced at the park ranger and the family. The little boy was hiding behind his father's legs. I had to protect these people. I couldn't just die. I tried to think, but my whole body was on fire. My head felt dizzy. I had no sword, and I was facing a massive fire-breathing monster and its mother. And I was so scared. There was no place else to go. So I stepped to the edge of the hole. Far, far below, the river glinted. If I died, would the monsters go away? Would they leave the humans alone? If you are the son of Poseidon, Echidna hissed, you would not fear water. Jump, Percy Jackson. Show me the water will not harm you. Jump and retrieve your sword. Prove your bloodline. Yeah, right, I thought. I'd read somewhere that jumping into water from a couple stories up was like jumping into solid asphalt. From here, I'd splatter on impact. The chimera's mouth glowed red, heating up for another blast. You have no faith, Kidna told me. You do not trust the gods. I cannot blame you, little coward. Better you die now. The gods are faithless. The poison is in your heart. She was right. I was dying. I could feel my breath slowing down. Nobody could save me, not even the gods. I backed up and looked down at the water. I remembered the warm glow of my father's smile when I was a baby. He must have seen me. He must have visited me when I was in my cradle. I remember the swirling green trident that had appeared above my head the night of the capture of the flag when Poseidon had claimed me as his son. But this wasn't the sea. This was the Mississippi, dead center of the USA. There was no sea god here. Die, faithless one! 
Echidna rasped, and the chimera sent a column of flame towards my face. Father, help me, I prayed. I turned and jumped, my clothes on fire, poison coursing through my veins. I plummeted towards the river.